Welcome back to the Backwoods Gourmet. Today we're doing an old southern favorite, chicken and dumplings. This is just going to be the first of a series of southern and soul food dishes done on the Dutch oven. So you guys stay tuned. We're, gonna, we're getting started here. We're just getting our chicken going. Just uh, sauteing that off a little bit here. We use the gas today because it's um, threatening rain. The wind's blowing like crazy. So we just uh, go on pretty low. The Dutch oven covered. We've got those going with just a little bit of oil. I like to uh, start off my chicken and dumplings by sauteing this chicken and um, and letting it render out some of its fat first. You can see it's uh, going along there pretty nice with the lid on it there. You can certainly do this uh, on the campfire, charcoal, whatever, and uh, you know we're getting those nice bits on the bottom where the skin is sticking there. And that's great because we're going to raise all that up with the broth here in a minute. So that's getting about ready. We're going to go ahead and uh, give it a few more minutes and then we'll pour off the oil and deglaze the pot. With your with your uh, tongs there will help uh, help them to cook a little faster. I need about another 15 minutes before they completely let go of their bone. If you're dealing with this whole chicken, uh, do the same thing. If you're making a bigger batch, do it with the same thing, and uh, you know you'll want to take your pieces out and cool them, and then debone them. Just needs a little more time. we've done is we've added a bay leaf and uh, four additional cups of water. Uh, we're probably uh, going to have to go in and check our salt here soon. Okay, here's our three parts of the Miroquois. Anybody knows anything about cooking knows about this. Onion, carrot, celery. This is all up to a boil so before we put our veg in we're going to go ahead and put in uh, two cloves of garlic. We get our seasoning in there right now. We got some uh, dried rosemary from our garden there. Yeah. Give it a good sh shake or two. Half teaspoon, quarter teaspoon, something like that. And then we got two buds of basil. We'll just throw them in. Stir them down in there. They're gonna they'll cook apart. So what we are developing now is our chicken broth part of this, you know. So I'll let that simmer a little while, and we'll be ready to put in our miracle. Hey guys, well, I wish we could uh, have, you know, smells up on YouTube um, because it smells awesome right now. I'm sure the neighbors are all going, what the heck is a Backwoods Gourmet making today? Because it sure smells good. Folks, it's time to go ahead and put in our Miroquois. A cup of celery. A cup of diced carrots. Cup of diced onions. 
And we may put just a little more water in there. But no, uh, not that important right now. We just want to get this going again. Get back up to the simmer. Get those veggies tender. Hopefully you can see we're running this on a really, really low flame. Uh, this is hard to do on the fish cooker without this uh, this extra grate I have here. This came off of a big commercial uh, range, cast iron. I got a couple of them. Uh, probably should have snagged all of them, but you set that on top of the fish cooker. You could also put that right on a fire, right on your coals, and uh, give you a nice level surface for your for your pan or your pot or whatever you're cooking with. But uh, if you ever find these things laying around, uh, you can also find them sometimes at uh, used commercial uh, appliance stores or kitchen equipment stores. This one I just come across. It's doing a great job. So, but anyway, if you don't have this and you're doing a campfire, then you want to use it on your tripod and hang it so you can adjust it up and down. Okay, it's time to make our dumplings. And dumplings couldn't be simpler. Um, they're very similar to making a biscuit, except that we're not going to use much leveling in it. We're going to start out with, uh, for this size batch, just one cup of flour. All purpose. Now, if, if you're using uh, self rising flour, leave this out. Uh, bacon powder. Normally if I was making biscuits this would be a lot. In this case it's only going to be about a teaspoon. Okay. Still on the rise but not very much. Also about a half teaspoon of salt and I like a little pepper in my in my dumplings. So we'll go ahead and uh, mix up the dry ingredients real well. And then we're going to go ahead and put in our fat, just like with biscuits. Um, here we didn't have uh, lard today, so I'm going to put in uh, about two tablespoons of softened butter. And then I'll show you how we cut that in to make it easy. This is my favorite tool for uh, getting uh, your fat into your flour. It's just a potato masher. I uh, started using this just because I had it. And if you got one of them fancy pastry blenders, I don't know that it works any better than this does. We just basically just mash the uh, mash the butter right into the right into flour just to get it incorporated. You can squish it around, you can smash it in. It doesn't have to be completely incorporated, but it's just start looking kind of sandy, just like if we're making a biscuit. So that worked pretty quick, and uh, that's just about ready right now. Now you can use milk in this, um, find it's not really necessary. Uh, the richness is going to come from the broth, so here we're just going to slowly start adding water just until a, a batter comes together. So just a little bit at a time, it's easy to overdo this and if you get too much in it, it's uh, hard to take it back. Uh, even right now I'm tempted to put more water in there, but I'm going to swish it around and see how much of that gets picked up to dry. And as you can see, almost all the dry, we may put about a tablespoon more in there. Just to get this all to come in, come together into a dough. So be real careful with your milk and or your water. Uh, I just want that just to come together as a dough. And you know, obviously if you're making a bigger batch, you're gonna wanna double double up this recipe. That's pretty sticky dough right there. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, just give it a little sprink sprinkle of flour on top and a sprinkle in the, in the bowl, just so we can get it to roll around. And we get it coated on all the sides. And we're just gonna kinda give it a quick little knead with our hands. And let it keep picking up that flour. Just to make sure everything's, you know, rolled around in there, keep it coated with the flour. I just like to do this by hand. Right. Just a quick knead like that, and uh, that looks pretty good. So we're ready to roll it out. All right, we're gonna go ahead and make our uh, make our dumplings now. First, we just want to flour. I got a piece of wax paper down here, just makes cleanup easier. So we're gonna go ahead and pull our uh, our dough over here, and we want to make sure that bowl uh, is nice and flour because we're gonna put it back in there. And here you you can use a rolling pin. Uh, to, to press these out, um, I find that it's not necessary. You're not, 
you, I mean, there's not going to be any kind of a presentation on these. They're going to go back into that process. So, well, they got a few finger marks in them or they don't, it's not going to matter whatsoever. We just want to press them out pretty thin, uh, about an eighth of an inch uh, in thickness. So we'll take that and just, we just work it with our hands, we'll press it out. We got our, uh, our pastry cutter and we're going to cut them into, uh, strips are about three quarters of an inch wide to begin with. So just cut those. And you know, it's uh, sticking a little bit on the wax paper. So if you have to, go ahead and just pull it up. Make sure there's a good uh, layer of flour over on the other side. <coughs> so that they come up nice and easy. Okay, three quarters of an inch wide. We just, uh, or just a little dust of flour, just to make sure they're not sticking to each other. And then we'll come back in and we'll cut them the other way, an uh, inch or two long. Okay. So we're look at looking at little rectangles for our noodles. All right, well, the veg is all uh, nice and cooked in there now. And if you're going to uh, prepare this ahead of time, which I, I, if you're out camping, I would suggest that, you know, start this early. And uh, get it to this point, and then right before you're uh, ready to eat, then you can, you know, throw it back up on the fire and go ahead and complete the process. But uh, the veg is looking really good. It's done, and we just added about uh, four cups of water back to it. Well, we want plenty of broth. And here's where we want to test our saltiness uh, and see if we're okay. Okay, there. well, I just uh, took a little broth. Check this, got a really good flavor, but needs just a little bit of salt. So we're gonna go ahead and maybe put about a teaspoon, about a teaspoon of salt. You know, that, uh, that chicken broth we put in earlier had salt, plus we seasoned the chicken when we put it in. So you can always put that salt back in there, but you can't take it out. So be careful with it. Okay, well, my phone's hollering severe thunderstorm warning for my area, really black back to the west. So we're gonna get this going. All right, start time to put in our dumplings. At this point, we want this pot to be kind of at a roll of boil, and we'll add them one by one. We're gonna scatter them around the pot. They uh, will rise once they meet that that hot broth. Uh, the trick is to keep them from sticking all together. And as we're doing them too, we're we're pressing them back out flat in case they've wadded up in the pan. We just want them to be kind of flat so that they all cook evenly. And you don't want to put any blobs in, you know, if they're stuck together or whatever in there. I'm just going to kind of toss them as we go all around the pan. Okay, we found that bay leaf. Go ahead. Time to go ahead and take him out of there. I don't want anybody eating that. Okay, it's starting to look about the right uh, amount of dumplings per chicken we have there. We're just gonna go ahead, turn that fire back down, and uh, let those simmer for a while. And as it does, they will uh, the flour from those dumplings will dissolve a little as they soak up the broth, and it'll thicken up the uh, the dish. All right, folks, let's go ahead and serve this up. Um, smells awesome and very hot still. Let's grab our lifter. Open, it, open up our pot and uh, this should be like a kind of a you know thick stew not a soup um, yeah, you can use uh, a little bit of uh, cornstarch if yours turns out too thin but I don't think you'll have that problem if you follow this recipe all right so that's pretty much it all we got for garnish we got some a uh, little bit of finely grated carrot for the top and some uh, little green onions right over the top there and that is going to be awesome hey thanks for watching the Backwoods Gourmet today chicken and uh, dumplings were really awesome hey and uh, stay tuned and keep following us for more southern favorites We'll see you next time.